Hi guys, it's Nick here from Hidden Valley Bushcraft and this week I'm going to be talking to you about bushcraft gear on a budget, okay, and how to go about upcycling everyday items to make your own. True story, when I first started out with Hidden Valley Bushcraft, I started out on an absolute shoestring budget. That is to say there was nothing in the bank and I couldn't necessarily afford fancy high-end well-known brand products and so a lot of the time I had to think my way outside the box all whilst doing uh, the bare essentials and running basic courses to save enough money to then buy that next piece of the puzzle which for me was 20 knives 20 saws and it went from there so we're going to have a look at three items today we'll start smallest to largest okay the first thing that I'm going to be showing you is how to make your very own waterproof match fire lighting kit. This is a lesson that I do quite often with cadets, scouts, anybody who's uh, going to be spending a serious amount of time in the outdoors, but it's also a great uh, opportunity for families to come together uh, and kind of go ahead and make these things. So here it is. Some of you may already have twigged um, some of its, uh, its key ingredients, but we're going to go and take a closer look because I've got the entire box just here. Well, why carry matches? There's been a lot of a lot of talk recently about our oh, matches outdated. You see, you see people talking and, and, and pop into our comments box sometimes from various groups. Feel free to leave those comments. It's really important that we have this discussion. Some people say, look, I just carry a lighter. We need to move with the times. Other people say, I like to carry matches. Personally, I like to carry matches and I've always got one of these waterproof match lighting kits. I've got one in my little uh, EDC bag over here. I carry one in my shooting bag, which is back at the house. Life in the outdoors means you can't always guarantee on the equipment to work every single time. You have to always have a backup. You have to have a plan B. And I think it's important to be prepared and have a prepared mindset towards spending time in the outdoors. That's not to say that you have to become a full on uh, ninja zombie apocalyptic survival fantasist. That is to just say, you need to be practical, practically minded, practically minded people, common sense. You know, your lighter is not going to go on forever. Yes, it'll get you so far. Maybe you carry a spare lighter. But in addition to that, I'd also carry uh, a waterproofed match lighting kit like this because it just weighs absolutely nothing. Okay, I can go ahead uh, and I'm that confident I can chuck this into the waterfall, watch it go over the side, and I know that it's gonna be bone dry inside afterwards. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make one of these now. Making these are pretty straightforward. Okay, I've reused or chosen to recycle or upcycle these uh, immune support tablets that you can buy. What's this? Vitamin C and zinc. Now, I didn't personally consume all of these. I just put a shout out to friends and family on social media a while ago to anyone who collects these or has these. Um, could, I, could they collect them and give them to me? Now, if you think about what this actually is, is a food grade, medicine grade container, which means it's gonna be good and waterproof. Incredibly light, okay? It's not the greatest grade of plastic I've ever seen in my life. And if you are operating in super cold temperatures, uh, I have a feeling that this could become brittle. But for the most part, I've never had a problem here in the UK and we are going to go ahead and insulate it somewhat afterwards as part of the process. So you'll need one of these. You will need a pair of scissors, okay? If you're watching this and you're under 18, make sure you've got a parent with you or an adult to supervise. I use bright red insulative tape. The one I showed you in the demo is a very, very early one. Uh, it goes to show how long I've had these things and I keep them and carry them for. Quite quickly after making them in black, I decided the brighter the color, the more chance I would have of finding it on the forest floor. And you can get many colors of this electrical tape. You can get green, you can get orange, you can get uh, the earth one, which is like green and yellow. You can get all kinds of colors. So I work with red. You're going to need to buy yourself an extra long pack of matches. Okay, that's how they look when they come in the box. And we're going to cannibalize the box. We're going to use parts of the box and of course the matches. So another item you're going to need is something like a pack of tissues. Ideally some cotton wool would be really good. Um, but tissues will do just fine. It really is that simple guys. It's, it's, it's items that you're probably going to have kicking around the house. Or if you're going to go ahead and buy them, it's not going to cost you a whole bunch at all. We're talking probably under $10 for the whole thing. In addition to that, I've got inside this bag, and this is optional. Okay, I've got some, and just, just to show you an example of what this is, okay, this is the inside of a bit of bike inner tube. And it's mostly about the fact that the rubber is really good for, for getting a fire started. So open up the box. Okay, and the first thing you're gonna do 
is take the scissors and you're going to cut down the side of the box and you're going to cut just the striker off. Try and be accurate. It's about saving space. You don't want too much of that yellow paper in there as well. That's just not useful. Okay, so you've taken off the striker off one side. Okay, the rest of the box now is pretty much obsolete. And you're just going to tidy up these ends. Trim those up. Now this is now going to get carefully concertinaed down till it looks something like that one there. Because of course this has to fit inside the top here. Okay, so that's your first move. Take off the striker, concertina it up. Then what I'd like you to do, is you're gonna need a bin for this next stage, or an area or something you can tip into. Inside the lid here, you'll see if you look closely, you've got this kind of porous paper. And I did say that these are medical grade guys, okay? So you can just go ahead and unpick, unpick the end here. Okay, and inside, just be careful because uh, these things will go everywhere and they're not good for the environment. You'll see all these tiny little silica gel balls. Okay, and this is what you get when you get a new set of sneakers or trainers. Um, you'll get little sachets containing this stuff inside. It's going in the bin. Done. Okay, now there's a recess up inside here, which could be really useful for packing either more of your sort of tissue and wadding stuff to, to get the fire started, or there's various ways of stuffing off cuts of this uh, rubber inside there. That's where this kind of comes into its own and becomes a handy. It's quite soft, small diameter, and as I said, this would just be finding its way to the local tip. So you can cut it up like that. Okay, and depending on how you want to go ahead and cut it, you could just cut off a small slither, about a centimetre, up the side. You can roll that into a ball. Because remember, this is an emergency fire lighting kit. This isn't something that's going to get used every single day. So you see how tightly I've rolled that? Nice and tight. I'm going to go and I'm going to pop that just inside there. Okay, so I can pick that out with a sharp stick or with my knife as and when I really need to. Um, I could go ahead and go the whole hog and also use the recess around the outside edge and wrap it there as well. It's still going to close, it's still going to be fine. I'll just leave that there for now. The next thing you're going to do, probably goes without saying, is get as many matches as you can physically fit down inside your tube. Okay, and you, you can see clearly that there's room, there's room for more here. Okay, that's pretty packed out, pretty tight. Not sure I can get any more in there. Or maybe one more. There's always one. There we go. So these are packed in real tight. Now, bear in mind that when you've got to get this out, there's going to be a bit of this that goes on, okay? And then you can start to, to wheedle them all out. Take a tissue or a piece of cotton wool. It really doesn't matter. Fold it down, fold it again. Fold it over one more time. Pack it as tightly as you can make this thing and press that down inside there. Now this is very important that you separate the match heads from the striker with the wadding. For the obvious reason that of course, if the two combine with any speed uh, and, and friction, there's a good chance that you'll just have the whole box just go off. Uh, and we don't want that, do we? Once you've got the wad in there, then put the concertina in the top and then take your lid. Pack that down tight, okay? Make sure it's, it's, it's bitten down on the lip that comes with it. And then easy peasy, just take some bright, bright colored. I mean, the box itself is brightly colored as, as it is, guys. But um, also talking about you know, that insulation thing. This is insulation tape after all. We're just gonna give it a quick wrap with this stuff. Once you've got it going, you should be able to then just there we go. As I said, this is a fun little project you can do as a family. This is a fun little project you can do with uh, groups. 
Um, Duke of Edinburgh students should all probably be carrying something like this as a backup in their equipment. If you think about a match, a match is a readily available all-in-one stop shop. You've got that chemical reaction happening at one end and it does what it's supposed to. Now, lighting a match in the outdoors can be quite tricky, as demonstrated. What you really want to be doing, okay, is striking downwards and cupping from the wind in your hand. And really, really nurturing that flame. Really nurturing it until it has started to climb the fuel, which is the stick. Then you can expose it to the outdoors. I'm only saying this because I've seen countless people come on courses and they decide to light a match and stand it this way up. And of course, all the heat and the fire is going up and the fuel is below it. So that is how you light it. And now I've got, because I've got a long match, I've got quite a bit of fuel here for it to burn, giving me a great opportunity to get a fire started. Okay, so it's quite a different beast to something like the fire striker. So there we go, guys. That is it in a nutshell. Quite quick, simple and easy. I don't think we need to over the point anymore. And that just sits in my EDC bag, just as a, a go-to. Okay, and then we're gonna move on to item number two, which is going to be a cheap and cheerful, reliable billy can. Some of you will have seen the video, please check it out on uh, water purification, okay, using a British Millbank bag, something like this. Okay, I generally have 20 of these made up with a Millbank bag inside ready for working with students, cadet groups, military forces, whoever, whoever I'm teaching that week. I wanted to go ahead and get, get started teaching and I wanted to teach groups in numbers because I figured that was gonna help me get the, the money up to, to start with when I, when I first set out in business. But listen, I didn't have 14 or 15 English pounds, not sure what that is in dollars, to be able to buy things like a zebra can. I'll put a link to a zebra can in the box below. They are very good, uh, good hardy quality um, steel, solid steel construction, stainless steel construction can, uh, billy can that you can use, you know, out in the woods, very reliable, good piece of equipment. And all I had was my Crusader mug uh, and a handful of other items, but I really wanted something that I could get clients to go down to the river, collect the water, go through the processes, okay, that we did in the water purification video, and then have the end result of the clients boiling water and then drinking it and making their own wild cup of tea start to finish. 15 times 20 is no joke when you've got nothing in your bank account. So I thought for a while and then I started to, to dawn on me, I started thinking, right, well, what is it? Stainless steel, food grade. I was like, I know. So I went down to like a bargain store where everything's like one pound here in the UK and I went and found if you look closely, it says sugar. Hopefully you can see that, sugar. Okay, so I went and got, for a pound a piece, tea, coffee, sugar containers, stainless steel, food grade. And then all I did was just punch a hole in the side, real simple, and I got hold of some uh, stainless wire. Um, I'm trying to think where this came from. I think it was from a friend of mine who's a welder or something like that. It, it was so cheap, you could use a coat hanger, like don't break the bank at all. I just poked it through. Okay, and then when it came to the lid, I went on something like Amazon or eBay or somewhere, and I just got a whole bunch of stainless screws with wooden topped uh, doorknobs. I bought a whole pack of doorknobs, like 30 doorknobs for like, £2.50 or something. I think the postage was more than the actual item itself. I went into the workshop, et voila, just put them together and it's pretty straightforward. Okay, this kind of swivels. You pop that on top. The only thing I discovered that's a slight snag with this uh, can be is when the clients have built themselves an enormous fire, okay, the edges can swell and if they pack it down real tight, okay, you can have yourselves a pressure cooker situation. So, as I explained to everyone, because these, you know, they do seal really well. They are food grade. <laughs> so you have to make sure you just lay the lid on like that. Okay, so it's pretty simple. It's kind of the same concept as the whole Kelly kettle. Just don't be a fool. It's as simple as that. And then the Millbank bag just comes inside it because when I'm teaching this, obviously, I want to just hand these out and then I know it's a one-stop shop. 
So as I said, I've got 20 of these in a box on the shelf um, back in the workshop, ready to go on courses, ready to deploy, hang over a fire, or sit quite nicely on a fire, on a pot stand. Which brings me to my next item I'm gonna show you today. The very, very thrifty, one and only shopping basket pot stand. Such an easy item, so versatile, strong, sturdy, and something you can leave in situ. So if you have yourself a fixed camp where you're gonna go out and visit and then come back again, and it might be that you have to leave the truck and then you have to kind of walk quite a ways to get to where you are. It's just nice to know you've got a pot stand ready, good to go. Of course you can use a hollowed out log. Of course you can just stick your pot into the coals or between two logs but a pot stand's always fun. In particular, what's great about this design is I can use it with a star fire. If you're not sure what I mean by a star fire, okay, you're an Indian fire or a hunter's fire, lots of different ways of describing it. Check out our video on the four fundamental fire lays and the ways that we uh, configure the fire throughout the year for different situations, scenarios, different weather types. I've got an old one here and it's time to retire it and break out the new one which I've already kind of pretty much done. I've just got to finish off the last parts. So here is the old one. Let's just take a quick look at this. It's pretty bog standard, okay? This one was found in the river, here in the River Chu, when I was having a conservation clear up day. Let's hold it up to the light. Okay, and as you can see, it's distorted somewhat. Through, throughout the last four years of use, you know, I've had like 20 kilo pots sat on top of this thing. Uh, with the fire absolutely roaring underneath and it's been a good sturdy friend and I can just leave it up here okay I can just leave it in the camp help yourselves it's just a shopping basket and it's seen a lot of action so it's not like I'm particularly worried it's not some kind of heavy duty cast iron frame for horseshoes or multiple horseshoes that have been welded together or it's not some top high-end brand that I'm worried about and I have to carry to and fro it's not exactly man packable either. So it's not like I can just top flap it in my day sack, but I don't need to because I can just leave it in situ. This one was actually found by Louise in a bush. <laughs> this one was found in a bush at our new residence and was left by whoever, whoever owned it before. Obviously it just got lost and then the bush kind of overgrew. And so she found the shopping basket and it inspired me to, uh, to do an upgrade and a changing of the guard for the old one here. Now, all you're gonna need for this, pretty simple, uh, exercise is I've got an old set of um, pliers here which I normally carry in the Land Rover As you can see there they've been rusted and degreased a few times and I just use them really for, for dealing with sort of tricky fence lines and land management so I'm not too worried about these the teeth are in fairly good condition you can use your Leatherman just be wary that some of this thicker gauge stuff that gets used for these sorts uh, can be a bit tricky other thing to consider as well is you get different types of material. Okay, so some shopping baskets are made from galvanized steel, which you do not, do not want to be cooking. You don't want to be laying a steak on a brand new galvanized basket like this because that is going to end in tears. Okay, there's going to be a horrible reaction and you do not want to be ingesting that meat. That's going to be tainted and awful. Regular stainless steel also, you know, in use with these things as well. My advice would be stick it over a fire couple of times give it a good hard burn use it for what it's meant for a pot stand to stick a large pot like i said i've had a 20 kilo pot on here multiple times and it holds up really well but what also is great about this is you've got the windows to be able to feed your four-sided starfire so the only thing i've got to do here to finish this off right now is i've just got to bend and they will come off they just need a bit of <laughs> just need a bit of gumption Okay, there's that one gone. I'm gonna take these uh, handles off because they're not needed. Now I could reuse this wire elsewhere, okay, so I could strip out this rubber. Um, I might even be able to use it for making my, my billy cans. So I'll put that to one side. I try to reuse everything wherever possible. And I appreciate if you live in a remote location, you know, maybe you live up in the mountains somewhere, something like this would be a star find. Um, and something that you would you'd probably use every single item of. There we go. Okay, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Now, the important thing to remember is when you're happily snipping away, taking out the inside of this thing, what you must remember, and here's the lesson I learned, let's find a good corner, because I made a boo-boo there, I took one of the corners out. This one was done recently. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, 
four, five, six. Having tested this a few times over the years, if you need six bars on each corner to stop it from just collapsing under the weight uh, with the immense heat that a fire can produce. Okay, so once this is kind of, that's basically it in a nutshell, it's ready to get thrown into action. So to give you an idea of the way I would employ this thing, just pull that out. Okay, let's get that out of the way. Literally place the basket over the top and replace the fire. As it was, Ooh, he says. Okay, let's give that a blow. And something like my pot would just sit straight on the top there. It's as simple as that. So you could start your fire with your waterproof match lighting kit. You could use your, your pot stand to then sit your billy can on top of and purify, filter and purify your water to then have your cup of tea. Super simple stuff. Hasn't broken the bank. Bit of fun to make. Hopefully you've, uh, you've enjoyed that. Please, 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 can I just ask, you continue to support us and continue to leave your comments and continue to like, share and subscribe. Guys, it means the world to us. It's really, really important. And so we're, we're absolutely made up. We cannot believe the amount of support that we've gathered so far um, and that it keeps gaining momentum. If you like some of the stuff you saw today, please be sure to have a look back through our catalogue of videos because we've got everything in there from food, fire, shelter, water, navigation. Okay, make sure you tell, tell your friends, subscribe, hit the like button, and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.